Hello students. Now we are going to discuss the important topic that is d block elements and their uh, characteristics. We know d block it comes in between s block and p block. Most of elements of d blocks all are metals. And these d block elements are also called transition elements. There, these transition elements starts from group three to group twelve. That is the middle groups, group third to group twelve, all are called transition elements. And these are called d block elements. And generally, the transition elements. If you see the modern table, the tra whole transition elements are divided into four series. These are called four transition series. What are these? First series is called three D series. These are scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Ten elements. This is called first series. Very important series. Then. Second series is called four D series. That is yttrium, zirconium, niobium, molybdenum, technetium, ruthenium, rhodium, palladium, silver, and cadmium. Then five D series. That is third series: lanthanum, hafnium, tantalum, tungsten, rhenium, osmium, iridium, platinum, gold, and mercury. So and the, your 6D series is incomplete. We can say these are some most of elements are uh, that the synthetic elements. So that is not uh, required to discuss these things. But this three series is very important for your examinations. This is first series, second series, and third series. Uh, which type of elements are called transition elements? For the there is a specific definition of transition elements. That the transition elements means the modern definition is elements having partly filled or partially filled n minus one d subcell. That means these elements should have incomplete d subcell. That is the important definition of transition elements. If the elements contain incomplete, that is partially filled d subcell, that is called Transition elements. We know that the last electron entered in n minus one d subset of transition elements. For all transition elements, the last electron enter in n minus one d subset, and this n minus one d subset should be incomplete because the capacity of d is ten. It should contain one to ten. Maximum is ten electrons, and so that starting is the minimum one electron for d. These elements are called transition elements. So these are the all transition elements: first series, second series, and third third series. Three D means last electron entered in three D subcell. Four D means last electron entered in four D. Like this, last electron entered in five D. That's why these are called three D, four D, and five D series. Then, what are the general electronic configuration of these transition elements? Let us discuss. The general electronic configuration of transition element is n minus one d one to ten and n s one to two. This is very important. This thing is this one that n minus one d one to ten. D must contain one to ten because d capacity is ten. So it contains one to ten and n s this outermost subcell contain s capacity is two. So it contain one to two electrons. And this is the general electronic configuration of transition elements. But if you see the technique, I can remember the electronic configuration. For example, scandium twenty one. You have to write like this: scandium twenty one can be written as argon eighteen three b one four s two. This is the very important techniques. R is twenty one three b one. First, let us iron twenty six. For iron, what will be for iron twenty six? We can write like this: that uh, argon eighteen will be common. 
then 26 means 3d6 4 is 2 so this is the technique okay so from atomic number we can write electron number 27 3d7 4 is 2 and 28 3d8 4 is 2 only exception is which one and chromium and copper for chromium for chromium 24 it will be that uh, 3d5 4 is 1 this is the very important exception that for chromium instead of 3d4 4 is 2 it is 3d5 4 is 1 because on the basis of stability because half field orbital is more stable similarly chromium sorry this is for copper copper 29 can be written as 3d10 4 is 1 this is the instead of 3d9 4 is 2 it is 3d10 4 is 1 so d is fully filled and s is half filled half filled and fully filled orbitals are equally stable that's why to make it stable configuration it will be written as 3d10 4 is 1 not 3d9 4 is 2 but other elements will follow these rules as per the atomic number you can fill up the d subset so this is regarding the general electronic configuration of transition elements next you see regarding the atomic size that is the, the radius atomic size if you see the transition elements the transition elements atomic size of all transition element is less than your um, group 2 less than it is group 2 and less than your group 1 because the transition element starts after group 2 so group 2 this is your group 2 group 2 size is greater than transition elements and group 1 is greater than group 2 so in compared to that alkali and alkaline earth metals transition element the size is smaller then if you see the series, 3D series, 4D series and 5D series, if you compare, this is very important, this thing, that uh, 3D series, 3D series is less than 4D series, but 4D, 5D is just approximately same. 3D is less than 4D, 3D is less than, this is 3D, and uh, this is 4D and 5D. 4D, 5D size is approximately same. Why their size is 4D and 5D size is same? This because in between 4D and 5D, 4F subcell starts. As 4D and 5D, as in between 4D and 5D, 4F subcell starts, 4F subcell has a poor shielding effect. 4F subcell has poor shielding effect. Uh, it has poor shielding effect. That's why due to the poor shielding effect results contraction of size. That's why due to poor shielding effect the effective nuclear charge increases. That's why the size between 4D and 5D becomes equal. That's why 3D size is smaller than 4D, but 4D, 5D is similar size due to lantern. For example, zirconium and hafnium. Zirconium and hafnium. Which one? Zirconium is equal to hafnium. Size same. Why zirconium and hafnium similar size? Due to what? We can say due to poor shielding effect of F sub cell but we can think like this between 4D and 5D that lanthanides you see between you see lanthanide 57 hafnium 72 in between lanthanum and hafnium some 14 elements that lanthanides are there so lanthanides lanthanum to hafnium these 14 elements lanthanide shows lanthanide contraction due to the lanthanide contraction 4d and 5d remain same if you are right why zirconium hafnium is similar size due to lanthanide contraction what is the cause of lanthanide contraction you can write due to the poor shielding effect of you know poor shielding effect of 4 subset 4 subset has poor shielding effect that's why zirconium hafnium is similar size 
although size increases it should be size increasing from left to that is from top to bottom but this 4d and 5d is almost similar size comparable size due to what lanthanide contraction okay then melting and boiling point melting boiling point if you compare the transition elements greater high boiling melting point compared to group 2 and group 1 if you compare this one the transition elements has higher melting and boiling point compared to s block why why this uh, that uh, the um, melting and boiling point is more due to strong metallic bond strong metallic bond due to strong metallic bond due to this strong metallic bond this uh, transition elements has higher melting and boiling point then if you see another thing also another cause is there if you see the uh, middle elements generally middle elements middle elements have more melting point and boiling point why the middle element middle elements means suppose chromium manganese iron like this these elements of the middle part of this series have higher melting point because this metallic bond depends upon the uh, unpaired number of unpaired electrons if number of unpaired electrons are more then the metallic bond will be stronger because the covalence will be more if the covalence will be more the number of covalent bond will be more that's why and number of metallic bond also more so here what happens the middle element generally they have more number of unpaired electron as manganese is manganese 25 it is 3d5 and 4s2 3d5 means 5 electron are half filled means unpaired similarly chromium chromium has 3d5 and 4s1 this thing mainly this one this series if you say they have more number of unpaired electrons as they have more number of unpaired electrons their melting point is more because due to stronger metallic bond that's why the middle elements have more melting point and boiling point if you compare 3d 4d 5d the melting point order is 3d less than 4d less than 5d this is the order that is increasing order of melting point and the melting point of the middle elements these middle elements of the all series have higher melting point that's why we know tungsten already know tungsten has highest melting point metal highest melting point metal is tungsten that because it is 5d series so highest melting point because the number of unpaired electron is more that's why metallic bond will be more stronger so this is regarding the melting and boiling point of the transition elements the next property is about ionization energy ionization energy if you compare with this uh, your uh, transition elements have more ionization energy compared to s block if you compare with the s block transition elements have higher ionization energy compared to s block because these there is the two factors are there we can say the, that one factor is the metallic bond is strong electron is tightly uh, held by the uh, kernel because the kernel and outermost electron the attraction is more that's why metallic bond is stronger and that's why ionization is strong and ionization energy more another factor you can say because from so s block to g block when you move that the effective nuclear charge increases that's why the ionization energy is generally more so transition elements have high ionization energy that's why ionization energy high compare this to high ionization energy high ionization energy high melting and boiling point okay then another just uh, you, you remember another thing you had if you see the uh, size the, in, the increasing size no doubt size decreases from to left to right size decreases but the, the the size difference between the elements is very less this is very important thing regarding the size the very less difference very 
less difference. The size difference is very less along the series because uh, these are two factors are that for the change in size. One is increasing nuclear charge. Here nuclear charge increases. That's so, that is if nuclear charge increases, then size decreases. Another thing when the electron are in a D subset like this D1, D2, D3, D5, like this D5, D6, D7, D8, D10 and D, D10 like this. But if you see these things, are the electron added in D subcell, that added electron present in the D subcell has a more shielding effect. So from left to right, a nuclear charge increasing and shielding effect is increasing. Both are contradict contradicts each other. One is decreasing size, other is increasing size. We know when nuclear charge increases, size decreases. When shielding effect increases, size increases. So both effects just opposing each other due to this very less difference of size of the elements along the series. Why transition elements very less difference of atom size? Due to increasing nuclear charge and increasing shielding effect. This is a very important thing. Another thing, another thing I have forget to tell, these three elements, last three elements, if you see, this is zinc, cadmium and mercury, if you see, these three elements generally not considered as a transition elements. As for definite, at the definition, these three, zinc, cadmium and mercury, these three not transition element. They are not considered as transition elements. Why these not considered transition elements? Because they have which type of configuration? 3D10. If you definition 3D10 configuration. Zinc has 3D10, cadmium has 4D10, and mercury has 5D10. Are these are 3D10 con D10 configuration, so it has no uh, half filled or partially filled uh, D subcell. That's why these three elements are not considered transition element. But why they are placed with transition element? Because they have similar property with the transition element. That's why these three elements are placed with other elements. Okay. So regarding the ionic energy, transition element have uh, high ionic energy compared to S block elements due to strong metallic bond and more nuclear effective nuclear charge of the elements from left to right. Then if you see reduction potential, reduction potential depends upon mainly depends upon if you see their reduction potential compared to transition compared to the transition elements their reduction potential if you see is greater than your which one s block if you compare with the s block transition elements uh, transition elements they have high reduction potential compared to s block Due to high reduction potential, they have, they cannot produce hydrogen by reaction with the dilute acid. That's why these metals due to generally uh, compared to high reduction potential with compared with S block. If you compare with S block, your transition elements have high, high reduction potential. That means E naught value. This E naught value of transition elements is greater than greater than the S block. That's why they are chemically less reactive compared to S block elements. That is alkali metal and alkali metal. The question may be asked, why S blocks are more reactive than transition elements? Because S block has more negative value of reduction potential. Already we have read in 11th class, if reduction potential will be more negative, then, then the reactivity of metal will be more. So S block have more negative reduction potential, but transition elements have low negative, low, low value compared to which one? Negative value is low. The negative value of reduction, negative value of reduction potential transition element compared to S block. But S block have more negative reduction potential, but transition elements have low negative reduction potential. That's why I tell you that low. But we can say we compare the value, it is high. So, but it is observed that that this reduction potential not regular trends. Not 
not in regular trends. What does it mean? They, this means along the series, if you see along the series, the reduction potential not in regular order. Some cases may be more, some cases may be uh, less. That means the reduction potential value, the negative reduction potential, generally metals have negative reduction potential already know, but non-metals have positive reduction potential. If you compare this one, if you compare this one regarding the reduction potential along the series, their reduction potential value, uh, the trend of the trend means change of the reduction potential in the series are not in regular order. In some cases, it is increasing, some cases decreasing. Why? Due to, mainly this thing, due to, due to variation, variation of delta H vaporization, sublimation, you can write, delta H sublimation, that is, delta H sublimations, then delta H ionization, ionization energy, then delta H hydration, these three. These three things are important for calculation of reduction potential, that is sublimation, then ionization energy, then then hydration energy, these three things. But it is it is observed along the series these three values, enthalpy sublimation, and enthalpy ionization, and enthalpy hydration. These three things are not regular order along the series. Are these three things are regular order? Are not in regular order? Some cases um, enthalpy ionization may be more. Some cases enthalpy ionization is less. So, delta H sublimation always positive sign and delta H ionization, delta H sublimation is positive sign, delta H ionization also positive sign and delta H hydration negative sign. So, some cases the, these two value will be more and this value is less. If these two value will be more, then uh, reduction potential will be more positive. If delta H hydrogen is always negative sign, if delta H hydrogen will be more, then the reduction potential will be more negative. So, based on the these three values, are these three values along the series are not in regular order, that's why or along the series the tension elements show variation of reduction potential. So that means not in a regular order. This is very important regarding the reduction potential trends along the series. Then very important thing come to that uh, that another property that all transitional elements shows variable valency and oxygen state. Because why the valency and oxygen state is very because due to involvement of n minus 1 d and ns electron. This thing. What does it mean? That means both involve, both involve. That means tension elements, as the energy gap between N-1 D N S is very less, very low energy gap, so both electron take part in burn formation. If number of electron taking part in a burn formation more, then covalency will be more, then valence will be more. So why they show variable valency due to Involvement of n minus one d electron and n s electron due to closure energy. So more number of electron take part in one formation. That's why variable valence is shows and the oxygen state also very there. It is it is being observed that manganese this element uh, your shows manganese manganese shows plus one two plus seven oxygen states and chromium shows plus 1, 2, plus 6, like this. That means, the variable different value of oxygen state, different value of valency, they shows only due to involvement of N minus 1 D and NS electron and already we have read that as the tension elements have more number of unpaired electrons, so the covalence will be more and oxygen state will be also more. So this is the cause of variable valency of the 
and variable oxidation states of the transition elements. Then it is it is being observed that all transition elements produce color compound. Their compound and the metal itself also color. Why they show color compound? First one is you can say uh, having unpaired electron. Unpaired electron first point. Second thing second cause is the second cause is what is this? Why they produce color? Due to D D transition. D D transition. That means electron gets excited to next subcell, next D subcell due to excitation. Already you know when electron gets excited, it produces energy. When during the, this uh, excitation, D D transition, this excitation comes in visual region. That's why mainly they have unpaired electrons. That's why they are color. For example, we can write that scandium. Scandium has 3D1. Scandium, if you see, scandium 21 is 3D1 4 S2. If you write scandium 3 plus means 3D0. That means it is colorless. So it is colorless. Scandium 3 plus is colorless. Colorless. Similarly, if you see the charge that the ions of all transition elements, it may be color, it may be colorless, it depends upon the availability of unpaired electron. If it has unpaired electrons, then the mostly they are color. The color may be different, but they are color. So that's why, because you see your example, scandium 3 plus is colorless because it has no unpaired electron because 3 0. Similarly, your titanium 4 plus, if you see titanium. 4 plus is colorless. But if the atom having unpaired electron, then it is color. So this concept remember why they are color? If question is asked, because they have unpaired electron and showing DD transition. Due to DD transition and the transition comes in visual region, that's why they are color. Then the important next point is they produce complex. Complex compounds generally more stable. You know your hemoglobin is a complex compound of iron. Okay, then chlorophyll is a complex compound of magnesium, like this. So they produce complex. As they produce complex, for example, copper produces this complex. If you see the com complex of copper, if you see one example of complex, this this is a complex ion of copper. If you see silver, like this. Like this. So these are for one example, these are complex ions, complex compound. So why they produce complex? What is the cause of formation of complex? Because large surface area, large surface area, large surface area, vacant, vacant d orbitals. This is another point as a vacant d orbital, so it can produce because of during form you will read in next chapter that is your complex compound. If atom has vacant d orbital, it can produce complex. So large surface area and vacant d orbital. This is the main cause and a high charge density also. Another thing you can write high charge density. That means the positive charge density is more in case of transition metal due to small size. That's why produce very stable complex. So that's why almost all complex made of transition element due to that uh, as it has vacant d orbitals to accommodate electrons and vac and large surface area and high charge density. Due to this, they produce complex. Then another important property of transition element is tension metal is metal and its com compound use as a catalyst. They behave as a catalyst. We know almost all catalysts made of transition metals or transition transition metal compounds. Why why they produce catalyst? That mainly uh, first point cause is you can write large surface area. Large surface area, variable valency, and 
due to variable valency and that's why they produce what? One is large catalyst means large surface area is there and a variable valency. These two cause large surface area and a variable valency. This thing we, we can write this thing also. This point we may not be considered this one. This point which large surface area we, we may not write here in complex formation. Um, for complex formation you can write these two things. Which one? That vacant d orbital and high charge density. This is a better answer, better correct answer for the formation of complex. But large surface area and variable valency. As the tension elements are large surface area and variable valency, that's why you can write also vacant d orbital also right. Another thing also. Vacant d orbitals. As they have vacant d orbitals and more variable valency and large surface area, they produce complex compound. That's why almost all transition elements use as a catalyst. Okay. Then another important thing is that uh, produce interstitial compound. Interstitial compound means a compound with tension elements and some smaller size elements like your carbon, nitrogen, uh, hydrogen, these elements will be trapped, will be trapped in the voids of transition metals. When the, if you see, as they, as they have crystal structure, in the crystal structure, some voids are there, in the voids, these elements, smaller size elements, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, hydrogen, can be trapped in the voids. Some gap space there, in the gap, in the space, these elements will be trapped. When they produce interstitial compounds, then your becomes more hard, more hard, you become more hard, then high melting point, high melting point, like this. So, when they produce interstitial compound, then more stable, inert, inert properties, means less reactive, interstitial compound are less reactive, high melting point, more hard, this property changes when it will form interstitial compounds. We know that iron becomes more hard when the carbon content will be more in iron. Pure iron is become more softer. But uh, if you add carbon to iron, then like your pig iron, the cast iron, you become more harder. So another important property of transition element is high enthalpy automation. High enthalpy automation means due to that more energy required to convert into what? Vapors. To convert vapor, iron or any metal, tensile metal to convert into vapor form required more energy because strong metallic bond. Due to strong metallic bond, as they have strong metallic bond, as they have strong metallic bond, that's why they have high enthalpy automation. Another important property of uh, that tension element is that produce alloys. Why they produce alloys? Alloys means mixture of metals because due to comparable size, due to comparable size, comparable size means similar size. Due to similar, already have they already discussed why their size is not much more difference of size due to increase in nuclear charge and increase in shielding effect. That's why their size is uh, approximately same so one can fit with another in the crystal that's why they produce alloys you know brass bronze steel so many types of alloys are produced by the combination of different types of metals so due to comparable size these tension elements so uh, produce alloys then another important property of uh, transition element is that is uh, magnetic behavior, good magnetic behavior good magnetic magnetic properties good magnetic properties they have good magnetic properties which one good mag magnetic properties tension element shows good magnetic property magnetic property means mainly paramagnetic or diamagnetic paramagnetic paramagnetic nature 
paramagnetic nature means unpaired electrons having unpaired electrons as they have unpaired electrons so good magnetic character and the magnetic moment of uh, metals can be calculated mu value the mu value magnetic moment is equal to square root of n into n plus 2 what is n n is the number of unpaired electrons if the atoms have more number of unpaired electrons then the magnetic moment will be more it may be generally the having the unpaired electron means they are paramagnetic or ferromagnetic character you having no unpaired means diamagnetic already we have read atoms or molecules having no unpaired means diamagnetic having unpaired means either paramagnetic or ferromagnetic so the magnetic moment will be very high if they have on that's why the transition element shows more magnetic properties already you know you are that iron chromium nickel these are showing the magnetic behavior good magnetic some are paramagnetic some are diamagnetic the paramagnetic means they have unpaired electrons diamagnetic means they have pair electron no unpaired electron this is the some important properties of transitional elements how many properties we discuss 13 properties these 13 properties are very important characteristic of tra transition elements these are called d block elements group 3 to group 12 okay so this is regarding the properties you practice more okay thank you all